Tyrannosaurus rex, the apex predator. Long before humans ever walked the earth, a different king ruled the land. Its name was Tyrannosaurus rex. Despite its terrifying name, Tyrannosaurus rex probably spent most of its day just walking, slowly. It lived about 66 million years ago in what we now call North America. Back then, it was all swamps and coastlines. T-Rex was huge, up to 40 feet long, almost as long as a bus, but its arms, only three feet long, barely enough to scratch its chin. Still, those jaws were no joke. Each bite could crush bone. It didn't chase like in the movies, T-Rex probably ambushed its prey, then waited for it to stop moving. Scientists still debate, was T-Rex a predator or just a very lucky scavenger? Its skull was five feet long, like wearing a full-size sofa on your face. And yes, its vision wasn't bad. T-Rex could see you if you moved. But even King's Fall, 66 million years ago, a rock from space ended it all. The asteroid triggered fires, clouds of dust, and the end of the dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus rex didn't leave behind fossils often, but when it did, they were iconic. Today, we know its name means King of the Tyrant Lizards, which is a bit dramatic. T-Rex fossils have been found with bite marks from other T-Rexes. Even some had healed wounds, meaning they survived battles. It's hard to say what color they were. Feathers? Scales? Polka dots? They didn't roar like in the movies, more likely a deep, sleepy groan. T-Rex is gone, but in museums and our imaginations, it still rules. Spinosaurus, the river monster. Once upon a time, not in a castle, but in a steamy, tangled delta, where rivers fed into endless wetlands, there lived a dinosaur unlike any other. Spinosaurus. Longer than a school bus, he stretched over 50 feet from nose to tail. He may have even been bigger than T-Rex, but Spinosaurus wasn't chasing prey on land. He preferred the water. His name means spine lizard, and that sail on his back, it rose like a boat's rudder, call bony and strange. What it was for, no one knows for sure. Thermal regulation, mating display, just dinosaur fashion. Unlike his cousins, Spinosaurus had narrow jaws full of conical teeth. They weren't made for crushing bones, but for gripping slippery prey. Fossils suggest he spent much of his time in the water. He had webbed feet, densely packed bones that helped him sink, and maybe a crocodile-like tail to paddle. But he didn't rule the rivers alone. There were ancient sawfish, giant crocodiles, and other predators lurking in the delta. His bones were first discovered in Egypt in 1912, but sadly those fossils were destroyed during World War II, gone in a bombing raid, almost like he vanished again. Decades later, more bones were found in the sands of Morocco, and paleontologists began piecing him together, like a prehistoric puzzle with missing pieces. He still puzzles us. Did he walk well on land? Was he fully aquatic? What was that sail really for? He was not the king of the jungle, but the ghost of the river, slipping between reeds and shadows, more crocodile than dragon. And even now he's still evolving, not in nature, but in our understanding. Every new fossil changes the story, like ripples across ancient water. He may never be as famous as T-Rex, but he doesn't need to be. He ruled a world of river ghosts and forgotten fish and for now, that's enough. Gigantosaurus, the giant from the south, in the warm plains of what is now South America, roamed one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs the world has ever known. Its name was Giganotosaurus. Not as famous as T-Rex, but possibly even bigger. It lived about 98 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. Giganotosaurus means giant southern lizard, a fitting name for a predator that stretched over 40 feet in length.
Its skull alone was over five feet long, filled with sharp, serrated teeth, perfect for slicing into the flesh of massive prey. Unlike T. rex, which had a bone-crushing bite, Gygonotosaurus used speed, coordination, and slashing power. Its arms were longer than T. rex, but still not exactly impressive. Tiny arms were just part of the look. This dinosaur likely hunted giant herbivores, like the 70-foot-long Argentinosaurus. And it may not have hunted alone. Some scientists believe Gygonotosaurus worked in packs. Despite its size and strength, it eventually vanished from the Earth. Just another chapter in Earth's quiet reshaping. Fossils of Gygonotosaurus were first discovered in 1993 in Patagonia, Argentina. It quickly became one of the most important carnivores in dinosaur research, not just for its size, but for challenging T. rex's throne. And yet, its reign was silent. No roars echo anymore, only bones and guesses. In museums, its reconstructed skeleton towers over visitors with a gentle stillness, as if it knows something we don't. Gygonotosaurus reminds us that the world was once ruled by creatures we can barely comprehend today. Not everything leaves behind clear records, sometimes only fragments. And from those fragments, we imagine giants. Gygonotosaurus wasn't the last, but it was one of the greatest. A reminder of power without permanence. Its bones remain, but the world it ruled is gone. Ankylosaurus, the living tank. Let's begin with a creature that looked more like a medieval fortress than a dinosaur. Meet Ankylosaurus. Its name means fused lizard. It lived around 68 to 66 million years ago, just before the dinosaurs vanished. Weighed up to eight tons. That's about the size of a city bus, if the bus had spikes. Its back was a fortress of osteoderms, bony plates fused into the skin. And that tail, not just for show, it was a sledgehammer. Scientists think one tail swing could shatter bone. But despite the armor, Ankylosaurus was a gentle giant. It was a plant eater, low to the ground, munching on ferns and shrubs. Its mouth had a beak, not teeth, perfect for stripping leaves. Its low center of gravity made it hard to knock over, like trying to tip a boulder. Its enemies, mostly large predators, especially Tyrannosaurus rex. But attacking Ankylosaurus was a gamble, even for the king. Some fossils suggest they lived in small groups or alone, like armored tanks in the wild. Their armor wasn't just defense. It may have helped with temperature control. We've only found a few complete fossils. Most of what we know is pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. Its brain was small, not built for speed or smarts, but it didn't need to be smart. It was built to survive. Then came the end a big rock from space. Boom! And so the living tank vanished, but left behind a fossil legacy. Tough, quiet, and strangely adorable. Therizinosaurus, the mystery giant with claws. In a forest that no longer exists, wandered a dinosaur that looked like it came from a dream. Therizinosaurus, the name means scythed lizard. Fitting considering those claws. It was 10 meters long, as tall as a giraffe, as weird as anything evolution ever tried. But here's the twist. Despite those nightmare claws, it wasn't a hunter. Scientists thought it was a turtle when they first found the claws, then a sea monster, then this. It walked upright with feathers, long neck, big belly, giant arms, tiny head, fashionably bizarre. It belonged to a group of meat eaters, but switched to salad. 
It may have used its claws to pull down branches or to say, back off. Or maybe it just had them to look fabulous, like biological bling. Its hands were longer than a human arm, like Edward Scissorhands, but vegan. It likely moved slowly, big belly, wide feet, and no rush to get anywhere. Unlike the T-Rex, it wasn't built to bite. Its jaws were weak, its teeth leaf-shaped. Still, those claws were terrifying if you imagine getting tickled by a rake. Therizinosaurus lived in what's now Mongolia about 70 million years ago. Its fossils confused paleontologists for decades, but slowly the mystery unwrapped itself. It was proof that evolution doesn't always make sense, but it always makes something. No one knows how it sounded. Maybe it purred, maybe it honked. Its extinction was not personal, just a big cosmic accident. Then came the boom, lights out for the weirdest salad eater Earth ever saw. But its legacy lives on, in fossils, in feathers, and in the comfort that even weirdos had a place. Utah Raptor, the real raptor. Forget Hollywood's tiny velociraptors. Meet their real, terrifying cousin, Utah Raptor. Living 125 million years ago, it was one of the largest raptors ever, about the size of a polar bear. Its deadly weapons, a massive curved claw on each foot, nearly nine inches long. But it wasn't just brawn. Utah Raptor may have hunted in packs, like prehistoric wolves with scythes. It had feathers, not for flight, but for insulation, display, or drama. Think angry turkey meets ninja. It hunted early plant eaters like Iguanodon and probably anything else that annoyed it. Despite its power, Utah Raptor went extinct long before the asteroid. The reasons? Still a mystery. But its bones slept for millions of years, waiting to be found in dusty Utah rock. And when it was finally unearthed in 1991, it rewrote everything we thought we knew about raptors. Utah Raptor became a star, even got its own state park in Utah. Not bad for an ancient murder bird. Its legacy? A reminder that dinosaurs were weirder, scarier, and more fabulous than we imagined. So the next time you rewatch Jurassic Park, just remember, the real raptor was bigger, fluffier, and from Utah.